Good morning. Can you hear me? Good. My name is Chuck O'Toole. I'm uh, a longtime uh, physician from Grand Prairie, practiced here for 32 years, and have recently uh, uh, voyaged off into uh, completing a commitment that I made to when I graduated from medical school. I'm back teaching where I graduated from in Fort Worth at the U University of North Texas Health Science Center. But uh, the reason I'm here today is because I had a uh, fairly long career initially with the Army. They had me listed with the Army. I started out with the Army, but finished out 25 years in the Air Force in the Air Force Reserve. So it's my honor to serve as the MC today at this event. Uh, this is obviously a, a both uh, very uh, somewhat joyous, but uh, by the same token, very somber type of event. I would like to acknowledge everybody that's out there in the crowd, but today, because this is about the heroes and the fallen heroes, that's the folks we're going to introduce and talk about. So we'll be introducing the folks on the stage and talking about the folks that they're here to acknowledge <laughs> and to honor. So the rest of you, we're very proud that you're here. We appreciate it, but please don't be offended if we don't point anybody out. That fits right into my next promise to you, that is, and I found out in my military career, my best speeches were the ones that, where I said, I don't have a lot to say, and were followed very shortly thereafter by you're dismissed, and I'll try to stick to that uh, format today again, okay? So if we can, without any uh, further ado, I think what we'll try and do is go ahead and get started, and what we're gonna ask is the Hood and Tarrant County Color Guard to post the colors, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance uh, by uh, uh, Mitch uh, Galvin, thank you. So proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stars and bright stripes through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming.
want to acknowledge uh, uh, Erica Stevenson, who did our national uh, anthem there and all. At this time, what we'd like to do is uh, ask uh, uh, for John Knox from the American Legion to come up and uh, lead us in invocation. Let's pray. Father, on such a solemn and respectful occasion, we pause to give thanks. And furthermore, Father, as the general has so well conveyed, today is not about us. It is about those who have sacrificed on our behalf. We pray, Father, for a spirit of reverence, and furthermore, we pray for a spirit of utmost respect for those who have served on our behalf. We're really thankful. We're thankful for every person here, for those who continue to serve and continue to protect globally. Father, thank you for every way you bless us. In the name of Jesus, amen. I believe if you'd like, you can take your seats now. <laughs> or if you want to stand, that's fine. All right. Uh, bear with us a little bit here. Uh, we had uh, one minor staff who already I didn't get to introduce the speaker because I found myself at attention waiting for the colors to be posted. So we hopefully don't have any more of those, but we'll see. At this time, it's uh, my honor and I would like to introduce uh, Congressman Mike Conway, who's going to give us a few words and uh, some wisdom and shed some light on uh, his feelings today. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. It is great to be here, and um, uh, you've heard the word solemn and, and uh, respectful, but it's also a celebration today. We celebrate a country that will produce men and women who will uh, uh, serve this country in ways that uh, in places of danger and, and uh, in circumstances where sometimes they have to make that, uh, that ultimate sacrifice. I looked up the word duty in the dictionary, and it said, uh, it, it, it's a pretty straightforward deal. It's an act or something that is done as part of a job. Doesn't sound, that's just a word, duty. But when you add the word sacrifice to it, sacrifice means an act of giving up something that you want to keep in order to help somebody else. So when you put those two words together, duty and sacrifice, it then becomes something that's really noble, something that you can honor, something that you want to remember. Uh, and as, uh, as we go about remembering these three gentlemen who, uh, if you could have asked them on that last morning, uh, what are you going to do today? I suspect all three of them would have said some, something in the order of, I'm just going to go do my job. And, uh, and what about doing that job uh, in ways that, uh, that cost them uh, everything else that they were going to have? They gave up something that was really important to them, important to their families, and important to all of us in order to just simply uh, go do their job. Each of them in a different way, uh, but nevertheless, uh, ways that, uh, that we ought to uh, continue to remember them. Memorials and remembrances like this are important to families. Uh, my first wife passed of leukemia a long time ago. And as a, a family member, you worry because just life goes on for the rest of everybody else. And uh, you worry that uh, those folks aren't remembered. And, uh, and so today is important because for at least for these three families, they know uh, that their loved ones will be remembered. Each time somebody goes to the museum and takes a moment to, to take a look at the flags and the other, is, uh, the other articles of remembrance, they'll ask, you know, who was Sergeant First Class Riley Stevens? Who was uh, Sergeant uh, Lance McLean? Who was uh, Deputy Larry Miller? Why is it important that we're looking at this stuff? What did they do? And as a part of that, then they'll be remembered. Uh, not by family, who always for, will never forget, but remembered by the rest of us and others. So it's important that we go through these kind of exercises. It's important to families, clearly, uh, because they want their loved ones remembered. But it's important to the rest of us as well uh, because of what these sacrifices represent, what the good that is involved in it, and the fact that we have other folks, young men and women, who may very well be also be asked to defend this country, to do jobs uh, that require sacrifices. And it's important that we remember those who have, uh, have sacrificed. So I couldn't be more proud to be here today, to be a part of this uh, celebration. Uh, we've had flags flown over the United States Capitol. 
uh, in memory of each one of these uh, gentlemen. And so it's going to be my pleasure now to present them to each of the families and uh, to tell them thank you uh, again for, uh, for what their loved one did. Uh, just going to, going to work that morning, got to go do a job, and yet they had to make that sacrifice. They gave, some, gave up something that was important, something they wanted to keep in order to help somebody else. So it's great to be with us this morning, uh, and uh, I appreciate you letting me be a part of it. So first off will be the, uh, the Miller family. I can present this flag. Uh, there's also a certificate that goes with it, certified that was flown over the United States Capitol. I know Larry was, was killed a long time ago, but uh, remembering him is, uh, is really important. So it's my pleasure to present the North family with this flag. And now the McLean family. was killed last year. Um, <coughs> protecting a family from a really bad guy. So it's a great honor to present this flag for, uh, to the McLean family. <laughs> and now to the uh, Stevens family. First class, uh, Riley Stevens uh, was killed in Afghanistan. And uh, it's a great honor to be able to present this flag to the Stevens family uh, in recognition of his sacrifices. Again, thank you for letting me be here today. Uh, God bless each one of you. God bless Texas. And may God continue to bless. United States of America. Thank you very much. Right. We're going to start with uh, our individual uh, acknowledgement and recognition of these three individuals. Uh, it's my honor that I uh, was selected to uh, Give a brief bio on uh, Riley Stevens. Uh, he's uh, one of Hood County's own. He grew up here. He lived here. He uh, developed, under the guidance of his uh, family, the ethics, the morals, and the patriotism that was uh, so characteristic of this great country. Riley was born in August 26, 1973. He grew up in Toler, Texas. He went to Toler High School. He graduated from Toler High School in 1991. His entire career, even in high school, was committed to service to community, family, and country. While in high school, he was a volunteer fireman. He certified as an EMT while he was in high school as a fireman. And uh, this uh, trait of medical care, medic, continued throughout and in fact carried over and he was indeed a, uh, a Green Beret EMT through his military career. Riley had lots of choices. Riley was not a fellow who, uh, you know, back uh, in many years uh, ago, people that went in the military, a lot of them, they didn't have anything else to do. Riley was a saluted Victorian of his high school class. He was not a dummy. He could have done anything he wanted to do, and that's exactly what he did. He did what he wanted to do. He joined the military in 1993. He immediately went into Army training. Of course, couldn't be just the simple stuff, okay? So he had to go into assault rangers to start with, okay? Can't do any of that just wimpy stuff. You gotta do this, this, this real stuff. You gotta remember, he was on the high school football team. He was center on offense. He was a defensive uh, end, I believe, on uh, defense. So he played both sides of the, the ball, and that's the kind of guy he was. Uh, he, uh, wasn't backing away from anything. I think his brother, Ken, would probably attest to that. Although being the younger brother, he probably spent more of his time beating on him than anything else. <laughs> I know how that goes, okay? But the point is, it shows you the character and the nature of uh, Riley. 
You look at his military career, it's just exceptional. Bronze star with valor, multiple purple hearts, 40 other awards and decorations in his career. It wasn't enough that he decided to be an assault ranger. He decided he had to get more into the thick of it. So what's he do? He becomes a Green Beret medic. On top of that, Riley uh, served uh, basically uh, almost 20 years. He was at that crossroads where he could have easily retired and gone home and elected not to do that. He served five tours in Afghanistan. Not one, not two, five tours. He elected, he could have retired before going back for his fifth tour and elected to stay on. And in the very end, even at that time, his essence of his uh, demise was that he was trying to help out. He was trying to draw enemy fire so that they could locate the enemy at the time that he was killed on a rooftop and in a compound in Afghanistan. I think the measure of uh, this country is measured by the people like this that you see. Here's somebody who was willing to do this, and who was willing to step out there and put that extra thing there and pay the ultimate price. As a military leader, I can tell you, the other countries around are looking for how willing you are to win. They're looking to see how willing you are to die to try and accomplish that. And believe me, they look, they analyze how committed are these guys to these things, okay? If everybody wants to go home, you know, the first sign things are turning bad, they say, hey, we can win this. If they got guys like Riley Stevens on the other side, they're gonna say, maybe we better go home, and forget about this. So I have nothing uh, more really to say about this other than the fact he'll never be forgotten. He's truly one of the unsung heroes, and certainly we should never forget. I would like to uh, thank his parents, his brother who's in the seats, some additional family are down here for having brought this type of individual in. You can see the Stevens family is pretty dedicated. I'd like to ask him to just step up for a second, stand up. You know, it's a strange thing. He's in what makes the backbone of America, and what protects America. Folks like this are what makes and enables us to have the lifestyle, the freedoms, and the security that we have today. And my heart goes out to the Riley family. By the same token, I can't tell you how proud I am of these folks. And I thank you very much. Sorry about that, I forget, I gotta do one other job here. All right. At this time, we'd also like uh, for uh, uh, here of the Mayor of the City of Granbury, Nin Hewlett, he's going to go ahead and have a proclamation that he's going to read, followed by Julia Roberts, I mean, Julia Pinnell, pardon me. Julia Roberts? <laughs> Wishful thinking, what can I say? Julia Pinnell and the playing the bagpipes, following that by Doug Compton. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I am honored to be up here and honored to be a part of this program. And, and I do want to reach out and thank the folks that put this together, uh, Julie and Bob Pinnell, uh, uh, Tom Green, I've got Tom Green and, and uh, J.C. Campbell, and, and just the many other folks that got together to put this together because this is a great occasion. This is an, an, an occasion that I think is uh, people in Granbury uh, should come to and to honor these people in the way that they should be honored. You know, as a soldier in the military, I served in the, in the, uh, in the Army, and I'm going to just mirror what the congressman said. When a soldier gets up in the morning, he doesn't get up, he doesn't get up to be a hero. He gets up to do his job. He gets up to defend his country and to support his community and to support his family. He does that every morning and never once are they called a hero. So it's an honor to stand up here today to call a soldier a hero. 
and that's what we that's what we're doing today right now is to call in this soldier a hero probably for the first time mr. Riley was a hero in this community and he will continue to be a hero and we will remember him as a hero so it is my honor to read this proclamation for the city of Granbury whereas where it is, is it is our duty to remember our fallen brothers and sisters who have served with honor in the military service while protecting our country and whereas today we gather with the U.S. Veterans Museum during the ceremony to accept the memorial offered by the Riley C. Stevens family and whereas I invite all of Granbury to show how grateful we are for the courage shown as he gave the ultimate sacrifice and to join us as we honor our local military hero. U.S. Army Sergeant First Class Riley C. Stevens of Toler, Texas. Now therefore I, Nin Hewlett, the mayor of the city of Granbury, county seat of Hood County, Texas, do proclaim March the 22nd, 2014 as the Fallen Heroes Day. And I'd like to honor this to the Stevens family. I think as uh, O'Toole uh, announced, I think Julia Pinnell is next on our agenda here. Ms. Julia Pinnell, one of our organizers of this occasion. Thank you. We ring this as a remembrance bell for Sergeant First Class Stevens. That's a hard act to follow. <laughs> anyway, I'm Roger Deeds. I'm the Hood County Sheriff, and I'm thankful I'm here to be a part of this honoring our local fallen heroes. Um, someone who plays a significant role in our department, as well as other departments, the, my department at the Sheriff's Office, City of Granbury, the Police Department, and in the state with DPS is Pastor John Knox, and he's done so much for us. Um, over the years and he's definitely stepped up to the plate in the last last year and he's here today to talk to us about uh, the two deputies that we've lost here in Hood County so I'm going to turn it over to Pastor John Knox. In memory of Larry Miller, 
Larry John Miller was born May the 10th, 1952 in Pennsylvania to John and Jean Miller. He joined the United States Air Force in 1970 and proudly served at various posts around the world. He met Anna when they were both stationed in Madrid with the Air Force. She became the love of his life and they married in 1981. Together they raised three children, Christopher, Bonnie, and Laura. In 1985, he joined the police academy. Training in the police academy is intense, to say the least. There is a lot to learn in a very short amount of time, including a lot of what we would characterize as hands-on experience. Any self-respecting recruit is going to practice as well as hit the books and study the books diligently. Larry practiced proper handcuffing techniques on his four-year-old daughter. What good daughter would not want to help her dad excel in the academy, Laura? Larry ultimately graduated and went to work for the Hood County Sheriff's Office. He told Anna at some point during that time period, quote, this is my calling. And while he deeply valued his time serving in the U.S. Air Force, he felt being a cop was his true calling in life. He embraced the role of serving and protecting wholeheartedly. I think the average citizen has no inkling what the serve part of that phrase can potentially involve. One year, not long before the holidays, just before Christmas, Larry encountered a family whose home had been robbed. All of their Christmas gifts were taken. I think he also learned that their little girl saved her lunch money so she could replace the gifts that her parents would receive from her. Well, to make a long story short, Larry got involved in the mix and made sure that that particular family who had been robbed had Christmas that year. Larry just loved kids and was willing to go well above the call of duty to serve them and to serve them well. In fact, Larry was the kind of deputy to stop to change someone's tire on duty or to check on employees working all night jobs to ensure their safety. Don't misunderstand me this morning. Larry was not an angel with a halo hovering above his head. Anna describes him, and I'm going to quote her word for word, as, quote, a prankster with a good heart. So why do I have this feeling that Larry perpetually had this I'm up to something look on his face? He had a great sense of humor. He loved playing gags and practical jokes on people. You know, it's healthy for kids to grow up with a dad that has a sense of humor. And Larry was a great dad. He was one of those dads who didn't mind at all if one of his kids was on the receiving end of a really good prank. Larry always told Anna, if I don't come home, just know I love you. On January the 27th, 1992, Deputy Larry Miller was killed in an accident while en route to a fire on a rain slick road on Highway 377. Larry's goal in life was to help as many people as possible. This legacy has continued through organ and tissue donation. There is a man who lives in Longview today at this very moment who received Larry's heart. In fact, he had intended on being here at this ceremony and was unable to do so. Furthermore, there is a man who is living in Houston, even as we are speaking, 
who is on the receiving end of Larry's kidneys. There are others who have since passed on who are on the receiving end of organ and tissue donation because of Larry's sacrifice on their behalf. Larry's family is fortunate to have a relationship with each of these people that I have described. Today, we honor his calling. Today, we honor his service. And today, we honor organ donors. Today, we honor his memory. May the passage of time lead to an increase in respect for those that served in preceding years, and in particular, those who in some cases served a generation prior to our own. <clears throat> in memory of Sergeant Lance McLean. Lance Allen McLean was born on April the 1st, 1975 in Biloxi, Mississippi to Ricky and Joyce McLean. In 2002, Lance married the love of his life, Katie Cryer, in their hometown of Pico. He began his law enforcement career in Hamilton County and eventually landed here in Hood County where he began as a patrol deputy for the Hood County Sheriff's Office. Lance soon promoted to sergeant and also served the honor guard with the sheriff's office here. He was an avid fisherman and loved to play golf. Last fall at the golf tournament that we all organized in Lance's memory, his putter that was a part of his golf bag was auctioned off at the live auction we had following the golf tournament. There were two individuals bidding against each other with a vengeance at the auction that afternoon so they could each secure that putter. As we all suspected, however, they both had the same idea in mind. They wanted nothing more than Lance's friend, Captain Steve Smith, to have that putter as a permanent symbol of the friendship between he and Lance. I'm looking forward to playing golf with Steve this summer when he uses that putter and he still loses despite the fact that he <laughs> When the countywide SWAT team was formed that took in Granbury Police Department and the Hood County Sheriff's Office at the time, Lance joined immediately. The two groups from two agencies soon became a team one team as they practiced together in the same uniform. I probably should use the phrase, sort of, when I use the phrase, the same uniform. Lance's practice uniform included a red bandana <coughs> tied around his neck every single time they practiced. SWAT Commander Lieutenant Andrews had little patience with the red bandana. Surprise, surprise. I do believe Andrews told Lance, quote, to get rid of the red bandana. When they had a team picture made, Lance is standing on the back row, second from the right to be specific, wearing the red bandana. Andrews demanded a retake, but Lance prevailed. That picture now hangs above my desk. It's a large poster, actually. And it hangs above my desk as a constant reminder of my own calling to serve the servant and to serve the servant well. To serve those that protect and serve. But I have to confess this morning, I still laugh every time I see the red bandana Lance standing on the back row. Lance had excellent people skills. He was mischievous and fun-loving, 
but unquestionably dedicated to Katie and their two precious children, Quentin and Abby. I was privileged to serve with him over two years ago as we went together to deliver a death notification to a lady who lives here in Greenbury. And there's a little bit of an ironic twist as far as her particular profession. She teaches special needs children here in an elementary school in Granbury. Lance and I were entrusted with the responsibility of communicating to her that afternoon that her husband had been killed in a car crash. I told Lance as we were driving back to the office after we left her home that she was a special ed teacher in one of the elementary schools here. He was visibly moved, and I had no inkling at the time to the extent of why. But I was touched by his deep compassion and his ability to express kindness to someone that was in desperate need. On the July the 28th, 2013, June the 28th, on June the 28th, 2013, Lance confronted a heavily armed subject. This particular individual had been accused of sexually assaulting a young member of his extended family. In fact, this individual appeared at this victim's home to confront her on the morning of June the 28th, last summer. This same subject fired and shot Lance in the head. This man was confronted a few months later, a few moments later, by officers with the Hood County Sheriff's Office, the Granbury Police Department, and the Texas Department of Public Safety here in the city limits of Granbury, just a few blocks of where we are sitting at this very moment. I think it needs to be said this morning, they carried out their God-ordained responsibility and ended the perpetrator's life immediately. In the process, Granbury police officer Chad Davis was injured in the line of duty. Lance succumbed to his injuries the next day, June the 29th, 2013, in Fort Worth. Those of us that serve in any facet of law enforcement here in this community have been changed forever since Lance's death. There are a lot of things I'd love to share, but should not because of privacy and confidentiality of those that have been, things that have been expressed to me. But I can say that positive change has occurred in a lot of lives. And I can say with certainty that all of us are far closer than we were prior to June of last year. I probably should express a second confession. I had been a law enforcement chaplain for over 24 years and had assisted with line of duty deaths with other agencies. But I can say honestly, until June of last year, I was clueless. It's been a life changing experience. Today we honor his calling. And today, we honor SWAT. Today, we honor those that serve in honor guards. Today, we honor the memory of Sergeant Lance McLean. Thank you very much. This time, I'd like to introduce Ridge Roberts. Come to play song for us, so here's Robert Ridge. Thank you.
Wooden Ridge. Now I'd like to introduce the Honorable Ju Judge Daryl Cochran. <laughs> We have uh, two proclamations today to read, uh, but I'd like to start out by telling you a little story. Maybe you know, maybe you don't know. Uh, back there in the 1700s, the Quakers in Pennsylvania were not fighters. They were totally against uh, any kind of uh, physical violence. So what they decided to do is they were being attacked by the Indians and they didn't have any defense from them. So they brought over and gave land to the Scot-Irish people uh, from Northern Ireland to bring over because those were people, stouty, stout-hearted people who knew how to take care of themselves and take care of the people that were against them. And those people sp spread all the way down all the way down the coast, uh, into the inlets, into Kentucky, and into Tennessee. And one of their trademarks that they wore was a red bandana. And to go along with the story that we hear about Lance McLean. Now, that is where the term that we get is rednecks. So if you hear that redneck, it is a compliment. It is not something to be ashamed of. So. All right, I'd like to read these two proclamations. March 22nd, 2014, the Fallen Heroes Day. Hood County joins Granbury in honoring the fallen he heroes. Whereas, it is our duty to remember our fallen heroes, brothers and sisters who have served with honor and have protected the safety and security of our community. And whereas, I invite all of Hood County to join the U.S. Veterans Museum on March 22, 2014, to honor these local heroes for their courage shown and who, like others, have given the ultimate service to Hood County. Sergeant Lance McLean, Lou McLean, a Hood County Sheriff's Department, and, and Deputy Sheriff Larry John Miller, Hood County Sheriff's Department. Now, therefore, I, Darrell Cockrum, a Hood County Judge of the County of Hood, State of Texas, do proclaim March 22nd, 2014 as Fallen Heroes Day in Hood County, signed the 11th day of uh, February 2014. And I'd like to present these to... Thank you, Judge. At this time, I'd like to, we're going to have a presentation, a flag presentation, but from the Hood County SWAT team. Julia Pennell for ringing of the bell. Before I ring the bell, I do want you to know that the beautiful piece of music that our young fiddle player, he wrote that. It's called Goliath. So what a wonderful honor. Thank you. Now the remembrance bell is rung for our deputies.
Thank you. Before we get finished here, I just wanted to also recognize the Tarrant County Honor Guard for being here and thank them for being here to help with this. And here at the very end, we're going to have taps by Ralph Raines from Granbury Independent School District. So really appreciate those guys being here. Tom, did you have any closing remarks? Okay, it's going to get loud here in a minute. Um, so we'll wind up with the 21-gun salute and taps at the very end. Thank you all for coming. <coughs>